All right, guys, we talked about the light direction, the light size. Now we're gonna talk about the color, the color of your light, um, because I think it's one of the most, um, it can have a big impact, but it's probably one of the most misunderstood parts of lighting as well. So that's what this part's all about, color. Um, I like this one, this is uh, it's a good one. <laughs> so, uh, most people know that when you change the color of light, it can drastically change the feeling of an image. It can change the emotion, the mood. It means a lot. Um, but it's hard to find information on like, what should you actually be doing with your light? Like what value should I actually set this to? And if you look hard, you'll probably find a chart like this, which tells you that, you know, blue is peace or orange is power, right? Um, the problem with these charts is that uh, it's almost entirely BS. Um, the scientific community has tried to, you know, replicate the study that these every color has a certain meaning, um, but they can't. Their conclusion is that there is no reliable evidence to suggest a direct relationship between a given color and a given emotion. The emotional responses that we have to colors are caused by culturally learned associations and by the physiological and psychological makeup of people. Take that, anyone who wrote one of these charts. Um, it's just, it, it makes sense, right? Like it's, it depends on how you grew up and what, what, what you see, when, what you feel when you see that color. Like, here's an example. What, what emotion do you think of when you see the color red? It might be anger, urgency, warning, danger. Um, but that is probably because you live in the West where we typically see the color red in emergency services. And when something is trying to get our attention, it's red. However, if you grew up in China, the color red means good luck and good fortune. Um, in Feng Shui, they, they paint the, the door to be red to invite good luck into their home. They give each other red envelopes with cash in them. Um, for, for like good luck. I had an Asian friend in school who like always, uh, uh, he always got them on like every holiday and he always came back with money and I was very jealous. Anyways, it's, it's really, it's up in the air as to what people are gonna feel when you show them a color. But it's, you can't ignore it. Like the color is important and you can clearly see that with nothing else changing in these images, the light, the color of that light is having a big impact on how we perceive it and the emotions that we feel. So the good news is, is that while color, the actual color of objects, like if you painted a wall, while that is very much up in the air as to what you're gonna feel, uh, the color of light is a little bit more predictable. So there are really two camps of color, light color that you can use. There is the natural light color, and then there is the artificial light colors. And I'm gonna talk about both of them, starting of course with natural. So this is colors of light that you will find in the real world. And by that, I mean basically the color of the sun and the color of the sky, the warm versus the cool. So, um, there is a scale called the Kelvin black body scale, which is based on the theory of like, if you took a radiator piece of metal and then you heated it, as you continued heating it, it would go through these colors, starting at orange to yellow to white, then going all the way to blue as it gets hotter. And what's interesting is that these colors are found in the real world through light. So most light falls into this spectrum by its raw, raw sense. So like, on the far left hand side, you've got fire, like really, like really uh, low intensity fire is gonna be like a red. And then you've got 2500s around like a morning or sunset uh, sun. And then you've got a daylight sun, just the color of the sun itself around 4500. Around 7000, it's the overcast sky, sorry, overcast clouds getting blue skylight as well as sunlight on top. And then all the way at the end, you've got um, blue, just the blue sky by itself. And the temperature that we feel when we see these this light colors lighting something is um, pretty predictable. <laughs> if it's orangey yellow, we tend to associate it with warm feelings. It's a warm environment. And then as it becomes neutral and then it becomes blue, it tends to start to feel colder. 
The reason it feels cold is just the absence of sun. If it's early morning, then the sun hasn't come up yet, and that's when it's most cold. If it's like a, a wintry day, the sun is behind you know, a, a sky of clouds, so you're seeing a mostly sort of gray feeling. I think you've also got glaciers, which are kind of a blue color as well. Um, but just the light itself, it's, it's rather predictable, the natural light, how you feel around this. Um, so here's an example. This was for the Rock Essentials. This is an image that we did, and then this is another image. Now, which one you prefer, I have no idea, um, but because it's subjective. <laughs> but uh, in regards to feelings of, of, of temperature, it'd be hard to argue that this one is colder. It's it definitely, it's warm, right? It just gives off a warm feeling, and this one gives off a colder feeling. So that's basically it, right? Now what's interesting is you can play these colors off each other in the same scene. And it's used um, to lots of success. I, I sometimes say on Twitter, it's like cheating. Like I find another artwork that uses the, the cheating uh, light scheme. It's uh, It just creates really nice looking results almost every time. Um, you make the environment blue, so it's cold, and then you put something desirable that you want the eyes drawn to as warmth and uh, as an orangey, yellowy sort of light, and then your eyes are guided there. And um, what's, what makes this work is, yes, because of the biological or physiological feelings you have around those colors, um, but also these are complementary colors. They play off each other on the color wheel. Um, so yeah, it's just a nice, nice color scheme. And in architecture, once you learn this, you'll, you'll see this everywhere, but architectural exterior photography is almost exclusively taken in what's called the blue hour. So we talked about the golden hour in the last video, um, which was like an hour before sunset or sunrise. The blue hour is an hour after sunset or sunrise, where the sky is still blue, but the sun's gone down. And um, what makes this appealing is twofold. One is yes, because the environment is blue and you can turn the lights on in the house and it can guide you in and it's inviting. Yes, that, but also um, it equalizes the exposure because um, in day daylight, in daytime, the sun is so bright that it's lighting the environment to such a bright amount that windows become black. It's almost impossible to expose for both the exterior as well as the interior on a, on a standard day um, without doing HDR photography, but then it looks fake and terrible. So uh, the blue hour is the, the light intensity for the environment is just low enough that you can still see the environment, but you can turn the lights on in the house and you can finally match them. You can expose for both the environment and the interior. So it's very clever. It's very, um, it's very effective. So I used it for this scene here, even though you can do exposure, whatever you want, but I just wanted to have a nice pleasing color scheme. And so I went with blue natural light early morning. And then to make it look desirable and warm inside, I set the, um, I set these, these down lights to be yellowy orange. Now I did a full tutorial on this, you can watch it, but just to briefly explain how you get this Kelvin scale in Blender, um, if you go, uh, when you've got your lamp selected, where you got the color, if you click the little dot next to the color, um, then just choose black body. And then what that'll do is it'll replace the uh, color palette with just that Kelvin scale. And then if it's set to like a low temperature amount, it's gonna be reddish color, drag it all up, it's gonna be yellow, white, then blue, etc. cetera. Um, so very simple, very easy. So that is the natural Kelvin color scheme and that typically signals temperature. The second um, camp that light color can fall into is artificial. And this is the full spectrum. And this typically signals location or symbolism. So the reason artificial lights can symbol location is that certain colors are only achievable in man-made artificial environments. Um, so for example, um, street lights often use this mercury uh, lamp source, which kind of gives off a greenish bluish tinge to it. Um, neon lights can obviously be anything um, such as purple, which is impossible to find really in the real world. Um, and then you've got LEDs, likewise can be any color they need to be. Um, and then you've got gels over the light sources as well. So all of these, these colors are, they're only, a, only achievable in man-made artificial environments. So therefore when we see that colored light, we tend to associate it with man-made environments. Cities, cyberpunk, um, outdoor nighttime environments tend to be associated with these, um, with these colors. So for example, 
from uh, some movies. Uh, so this is from Fight Club. It's uh, it's an outdoor on a street, and they're using this greenish, bluish sort of tinted light, like a street lamp. Very easy to associate. Like even if you didn't see the background, you could probably guess that they're outside, um, like in a street, right? <laughs> Just from that light. Uh, Blade Runner. I don't know why it's green. Maybe it was like a, trying to look like that old fluorescent, maybe giving off a green tinge or something. Um, then in Logan and Blade Runner, this purpley pinkish light. In both cases, they were standing next to like a billboard um, advertisement or a hologram, um, which is purple light, and it's impossible to find that in the natural world. And then in Ex Machina and Black, uh, I almost said Blue Panther. <laughs> Black Panther, um, you've got vibrant reds and then vibrant blues. Now these two colors down here are actually on the Kelvin scale, but the reason these signal artificial environments is that they're so vibrant and so, um, uh, yeah, they're so saturated that in order for it to be like that deep red, it would have to be like really low intensity, like coals on a fire, um, but to be that bright, it's artificial. Same with the blue here, makes sense, right? So that's location. The other thing that these colors can signify is story or symbolism. So um, in all these examples here, these were um, basically like really saturated, really deliberate calls to the color, where it's like it's almost impossible not to notice the choice of, of colored light in these examples here. And this is where it gets into that sort of wishy-washy, like artistic creativity, what does it mean? sort of feeling and um, this is where I think you know going back to that you know what does co each color mean I think some people can fall into the trap of thinking like oh purple will mean this purple will mean tranquility or peace or uh, vibrancy or like it's totally dependent on the individuals um, movies have a little bit more freedom and a little bit more uh, creativity in this this sense because they aren't just showing one image like what we are as 3D artists typically they're showing a whole movie and they could show like at the start a character in this red environment and signal to the viewer that oh this red environment is related makes them think about this and then when they use that red light again later on in the movie it's going to signify that connection you know um, whereas just on their own as still images, how you interpret these colors is really up to the individual. You might see the color pink as like love or lust. Um, somebody else might see the color pink as a representation of the, the oppressive patriarchy uh, to keep uh, girls in their predefined gender roles or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's really, it really, it, it's, it's random as to what someone is gonna, uh, gonna feel from it. But again, it, it can be used for the story and the symbolism in, you know, when you use it in these ways. So how does this actually work? So let's give a real uh, demonstration here. So I've got our character, um, not my character, by the way. Uh, I know she's uh, half naked, something I bought off Turbo Squid. We're just looking at the face, all right? Just focus on the face. Um, and it's currently lit with one singular lamp, which is white. Now, we didn't talk about it, but there's nothing wrong with just using white as a lamp. If you wanna keep it neutral, um, or if you want to show color, like the, the color, like the texturing work, if you've done a lot of work in texturing, you wouldn't want to use a colored light, you'd wanna keep it neutral so that the true color actually shows. Um, so it looks okay, but let's say you wanted to make it a little interesting or you wanted to create some pleasing color scheme. Um, let's do the, the first category, the natural uh, light. Um, so with this lamp here, um, okay, so it's because I'm using EV, I can't click the little thing next to it, which would make it show the um, black body. I think that just gives it a keyframe. I'm not sure if they're gonna change that, but anyway. Um, so I'm just gonna manually select a warm color here if uh, it would let me. Oh, come on now. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we got like a little bit of a warmish colored light. And then, uh, you know, I mean, you could actually just go warm on the other side as well. Um, like this, if you made this like a really darkish red, I mean, you're welcome to do that, but let's say we wanna play the colors off each other and make a complementary color scheme, something a little interesting. So let's go for a deep blue color like that, and let's put it in the background there. This is the first time we've added another lamp in there. Um, I've tried to keep this series, you know, so far just focused on a single lamp, but in the next video, we're gonna talk about adding in extra lamps um, to make something more readable. But this is called a rim light, right? So 
What's interesting, right, like is that we've got this warm light and now we've got this blue light and they kind of amplify each other because of relativity, right? Um, when you've just got warm lights together, they just, you know, they can feel whatever. But then if you've got a cold light in there, suddenly they feel like amped up uh, because you've got something to relate it to. So you could invert these. You can make this one blue, this one red. I'm sure you get the idea. Um, but let's say you wanted to go like... I don't know, make it look like a city scene. You could use a color which is not inside this orange or blue. You could use one of these colors over here, such as green or purple, which are exclusively found in the artificial man-made world. So even adding that, I mean, um, this is where you, this is where it gets into color theory. So um, I've actually got a video on this. If you haven't seen it already, you can watch it. And this is where we talk more about like matching complementary color schemes. Cause this video is just on light, like light, the color of light, but the actual colors in your scene is a totally different subject. And that's like matching colors and things like that. So you can watch this video and that'll um, tell you more about that. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that's kind of a pinkish thing there. And then I guess if you wanted to make this a like green, then it's like really clear, like this is a city, a city scene, right? Because these colors are not found anywhere in the natural world. So it feels artificial, it feels man-made. She's in a city scene. Um, or you could go like real stylized and this is where you get like super saturated, right? Like if we went um, like really deep, just really any sort of saturation. Um, I was thinking about this actually, like when I was looking at photos, um, the, I think the reason that saturation feels um, artificial is that it really, the only way to get saturation is either with an artificial light source, a man-made light source, or tinkering with a photo in like post-processing. So any amount of like deep saturation like this is just going to feel odd. It's going to, it's not going to feel odd. It's going to look deliberate um, like this. Like this is really, really abstract. So abstract is it's, 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 it's its own thing. It's like the artist is deliberately calling you to notice these lights. Don't notice so much about my modeling or my texturing, but look at my, look at this thing that I'm trying to portray this story. Not a lot of story being portrayed with just a static face looking directly into your, into your eyes. Um, you would have a more interesting pose and maybe an environment behind it, but you get, you get the idea. It's, um, it's using very deliberate, very in your face colors. Um, which is uh, hard to ignore. So anyway, I'm sure you, you get the idea. You can add more lights, um, go for a hot pink color, you know, becomes more city-like, I don't know. Anyway, that's, that's basically that. So it depends on what you want to say. You want to keep it neutral, keep it neutral, keep it white. And you want to focus on your texture and keep it white. If you want to portray hot and cold, stick to the Kelvin scheme, uh, keep it interesting, but kind of natural at the same time. Um, you, you can add in complementary, you know, hot, cold like that. And if you want to uh, emphasize location or symbolism, and I move my head so you can see it, um, introduce the colors, uh, green, purple, pink, and uh, just make them more vibrant. And that will make things look artificial, essentially. Um, so really like looking at these, these images here, really the, the one on the right there is like great for texturing the raw model, the beauty, it's natural. It's more, um, like look at my work. This is what I've done. These are more like stylized, um, especially the one in the middle here. This feels like a city scene, like neon cyberpunk, that kind of feeling guy uh, in the office next to me just arrived. Um, the one on the left there feels like it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's, you got the, the the white light, but it's a little bit more interesting because you got just a splash of color coming from behind her. So, you know, I'm sure you get the idea. As I mentioned, make sure you watch this video if you haven't already. And then also, if you've made it this far into the series, um, I just want to mention every week I find little tips, little videos, little articles about things like lighting theory, color theory, or composition, sometimes a new technology or a piece of software or a tip in Blender. And uh, I send this out as a newsletter. So it's totally free. Um, it's only for 3D artists. So if you're a photographer and you're watching this, because I know some photographers find these things, um, you probably won't enjoy this. But if you're a 3D artist and you've made it this far in the series, I think I think you want to learn. I think you want to improve. And I think, um, therefore, I think you'd enjoy this newsletter. So the link for that is in the description. Um, but that is it, guys, part three. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And uh, you can join me now in part four, where we're going to talk all about readability. So I'll see you in the next video.